Welcome to the lighter side of the dark side. It's your weekly freak show here on Renegade Radio and all podcast catchers, Spotify, Apple, YouTube, iHeartRadio, you know the deal. It's the Dark Mart Show. I am Dark Mart, the goth comedian. And unfortunately, this may be the work of Satan, but uh, our usual co-host, Nicole, can't make it today. And I, uh, we may be joined by my former co-host, Hannah, because this is one of her favorite subjects that we'll be talking about today. But she had a plumbing incident at her house, so she may not be making it tonight. But who is oh, making it? Yeah, you know, like I say, it could be could be the work of the devil. I don't know. But what? I will tell you, yes, it was your <laughs> fault. I will tell you that um, I am joined by somebody. Uh, I, As people know, I do an uh, unusual gig. Uh, Sharon LeVay asked me to host a beauty pageant for her at her club at her event a couple months ago. And I saw this stunning beauty was introduced as the first contestant. I said, well, the contest is over. There's nobody that's going to top her. And, and funnily enough, nobody showed up. So apparently she won by default. And then we got to talking and we really vibed and uh, found out she's a high priestess in the order of the black, the order of the black, the black flame sun. I knew I would get that wrong. And uh, she is fascinating. She's wonderful. And it's so great to finally talk to her again. You're always busy. You know, High Priestess is never, there's never a dull moment. It's Lucevoa von der Sturpan. Von der Stupid. Von der Stupid. Okay. Von der Stupid. That's even better. <laughs> that's even better. Von der Stupid. Now I, 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 I. <laughs> Say it, now. it all makes sense now. Oh, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna mistake <laughs> Von der Stupin for anything else from here on in. Every time I think of you, I'm gonna think Von der Stupin. But uh, how are you, Lissavoie? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, Mark? Oh, I'm doing great. You've asked me that quite a few times, and I'm doing uh, never better. And I'm so great. To, uh, I'm so glad to talk to you because we're gonna talk all things evil, satanic, magic self-improvements, all sorts of things. So magic, all sorts of things. How do you become a high priestess? What that entails? Everything like that. So I better get my energy up because you are quite energetic yourself. So I've got this. Here it is. Uh, if if uh, the Yes, there we go. Oh, nice. Let me get Ray, my drink quick. Yes, that's a Ray, Ray's energy drink. This, was the, this is the only drink that's sponsoring the show. That's Ray's energy drink. And you can drink whatever you want. But the, if you like energy drinks, and it sounds like you do, you can, you don't have to cover it up. You can drink whatever you want. But I'll tell you what, if you like energy, energy drinks as much as I do, get raised because this is the best. This is Baja lime flavor. Tastes like Baja Blast from Taco Bell, but better. Really? Zero calories, zero carbs, zero crash. Uh, you can get What's them at... that? Yes. You can get them at... Uh, Vitamin shops, GNCs, but why pay full price? Use the code in our description and get 15% off a case of Rays. So, Lucevoir, when did your interest in uh, Satan and their all things satanic start? Hmm. I would say I was born a Satanist. Okay. You know, I think like throughout my family life, I kind of had to suppress that, you know, my family upbringing, religion, all that stuff. But I think I really came into my Satanism when I was in my 20s. I kind of gathered this, but you were raised in a very religious household, unlike myself. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of Satanists are. Yeah. Well, my grandma, my grandma, she was always really into nature. We had big gardens. She was really, I would say, a witch, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad was a pastor. My mom was a missionary. That's how they met. They so we grew up in a very religious home. We went, he would have us go down for prayers, like, all the time. Like, it was very religious. But it never made sense to me. I was, like, being out in nature and being free and all that stuff, that made sense to me. That was, like, okay. Like, you know, a child, like, it sat right with my spirit. Mm -hmm. But, like, the whole religious thing, I was, like, even as a child, this does not make sense. It just causes so much dysfunction and self-hatred, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and every, every uh, preacher's daughter is, like, wild. Were you the, the the stereotype? They always they they're always the wildest ones. You just uh, those are the ones that you got to look out for. I don't know about that. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think you yeah. were, even before you discovered Satanism. I think you were pretty pretty wild in your teenage years. I would I would guess. 
No, actually, oh, let me see. Um, I think once it came out to California, because I was raised in Kansas, you know, good old Dutch. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's where I grew up at. So when we came to California, that really, like, opened the door to this whole nother world. You know, I really, as a teenager, I started getting the rave scene, and that really, like, opened the door to a whole nother world mm. for me. And it was just, like, all out on that, because it's something I never experienced before. The whole scene, like, the whole clear life, the love, the, mm-hmm. yeah. The ecstasy. The community, the ecstasy, like, the outfits. Like, getting to, like, just go and be somebody else, you know? Get sad out of the mundane life and just go and be free spirit. So you had uh, you had the big Jinko jeans and all that? No, not those. I had the little tutu skirts with the le- mm. with the fishnet leggings and the mm. cute little top and all bright colors and the, the hand lights, candy. Yeah, oh, yeah. Everything? Oh, I, I went to raves all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah. We used to go like back when they would like you have to call the hotline the day of and be out in the middle of the desert and then you find out and like you go show right. up there. Yeah. 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 I I remember those. No, those are the best. Like the, the ones that are the ones, you know, the ones that were okay but not great are the ones like uh that you they advertise and as you saw on social media. The one you had to call people and know somebody and that type of thing. Yeah. Out out in the desert and nowhere. Those were the best. Even like the ones out there in LA and the industry industrial buildings and everybody mm-hmm. has like the designer drugs or like, you know? Yeah. yeah. So uh, from a Kansas, from a small town in Kansas to, <laughs> geez, uh, you just exploded. I went wild. Yeah. So well, you're a preacher's daughter. That's, that's what happens. It's one so, of those things that was a fun scene while it lasted. And now everything's mostly mainstream, you know? That was, that's everything. I yeah. mean, that's, that's what Satanism has got to be in a few years, I think. I think we're right there. Right well, there. it's funny because like in the 70s, it was. They, they had a lot of lot of celebrities, Sammy Davis Jr. and all these celebrities that were hanging out with Anton LaVey. And uh, it was really mainstream at one point. Like porn. Yeah. The, yeah, that was about as big as it got. Well, I like to say, you know, as I say, history repeats itself, you know. And I'd like to think that we're going through a time where it's repeating itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems like fun times to live in. Yeah. Panic, panic. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> and that, and that's the other thing. Well, I guess, yeah, now I think about the 80s, too, because... Every heavy metal uh, group really got into the got into the Satan thing, and uh, and it was funny because uh, gangster rap killed that off. Yeah, how stupid. It, yeah, it was like the kids were like, you know, kids were like bringing home like you know, gangster records in the early nineties, and their parents were like, no, no, here, here's something satanic stuff. Please get back to this. Uh, we want some more Ozzy. <laughs> right. I love that, and it's so funny because most people they're like, oh no, it's not satanic. Like, yeah, it is. All these yeah. souls, come on now. No, we're gonna we're gonna get into that because uh, you're you're on the inside, so I want to know what's because what's really satanic and what's really not. I because I've had the uh, uh, the late Stan Tedovey on a couple of times, and we I asked him a lot of inside questions, and he never answered, but I know he knew the answers. So, well, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You can usually tell a saying is, you know, saying is I think have gone forward and accomplished stuff, and you can always tell by their artwork. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, symbolism, all that kind of stuff. It's all in there, black and white. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, but but how do you know if somebody's just just playing around with it or just goofing or somebody's really serious? I think it's like an art, you know. It's like let's say you're a wine taster, you know, somebody that just drinks normal wine. They're just they're not really going to have that taste developed for a finer wine that's been mm-hmm. developed over time to distinguish, right? But some, right. like same thing with Satanism and the cult, you know, you can tell as somebody who practices, you can tell if that person like is. Is somebody that's a divulged practice practitioner and how by how they're using symbolism, how they're using their energy, how they're using artistic skill and different things. It's like every rapper's like doing I mean, this. Stuff. Every rapper's doing like this stuff with their, you know, putting the, you know, doing the the, the Illuminati symbols and all that. Mm-hmm. So so Jay-Z and Beyonce, they're definitely Satanists. Let's let's let, let let's let's be clear, right? Yeah, I think there's some that just like the the whole like, you know. Just it looks cool. It adds a, it adds another layer of like mysteriousness. All right. See, you're not answering either, so nobody wants to out them. So, but I want to talk about you. So you were going to the raves. You were getting wild in in California. Now, when mm-hmm. did you when did uh, you start getting developing an interest in Satanism, and what 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 drew you to it? Oh, let's see. Um, I would say okay. So I've always been into magic ever since like a young age. Like I said, my grandma was like a witch and 
she was really into in nature. And that's what made sense to me, that underlying energy, that force that's in there that radiates through everything, that balance in the universe, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I always, always seen that. Bit. I was always very perceptive to that. And um, I think not until, like, I moved out of my family's house and I was on my own in the world and doing my own thing that I really got to start, like, looking into, like, other things besides what I was taught and raised with, right? And um, I remember going, like, even when I was at home, like, I had ac- I could get access to the computer, right? So I remember going mm-hmm. on the old uh, Church of State website and, like, I thought it was the coolest thing ever, you know? And, mm-hmm. um, but I had to be, like, really hush-hush about it at that time in my life because I was a teenager in a religious home, so it was kind of something I didn't really want to uh, disclose. Family that would, like, freak my mom out. Um, so I think it was with my 20s that I actually went out and bought my book, my first, like, satanic bio book, and then bought, like, all that Tom LeVay's work and started reading through that. And, like, really, um, he leaves, like, dro- like little, um, I was going to call it little gold nuggets, you know, in the deeper, mm-hmm. deeper magical cold works. But I think that's really when I started to get into um, Satanism. And at that time, that's when I started getting into the into adult entertainment and dancing. And I was working as a dancer. Okay. And, uh, I feel like it led from the cards, like life dealt me like to what I had started doing at that point in life. That was very empowered for me as a woman. Like it allowed me the opportunity to or opportunity to go to pay for myself to go to school to help raise my brother and sisters. Mm-hmm. But yet it was something that was looked down upon by my family and by, by like society that I was a dancer and doing all these things. But at the same time, like I was sober, I was clean and I was building, I built a good life with nothing, you know, for mm-hmm. myself. Yeah. And um, when I got into Anton LaVey's work, especially the Satanic Witch, that's one thing I really seen that 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 he empowered that part. Because it's like, okay, we got the part of religious, what religious contests said we should and shouldn't do. And then we got the part of human nature, you know? And I think that's a thing that Anton LaVey touched on really well, was his experience during you know, the carnival, how he's talking about how you have these church throwers, that they're one person during the day, you know? Mm-hmm. Kind of colder than now, but at night they're over here at the strip club doing all this stuff. But it's the same. Right. It's the same thing I've seen. You know, I have like, okay, well, this is how human nature is. You know, like it's oldest, oldest profession in history, right? So I feel yeah. like that's how I really got into Satanism. Was that empowered me as an individual, empowered me as a woman to to take uh, authority and power over that, not having to feel that I had to go the route of having family and being married and all those things in order to have like some type of value in life but distinguishing my value for who I am as an individual and my own creativity and being able to tap into my own femininity and power. Yeah. Well, being at a strip club, uh, you're definitely powerful and there's nothing, there's no shame in being a dancer or an adult entertainer. There's a shame in uh, being a man sitting at a strip club. I know. Cause I've done it a couple of times. And it's just, uh, <laughs> they're the ones yeah, that are like, I feel like, at that point in my life, like a lot of people deserted me because I became a dancer. Like, because I became a dancer, I took the race by myself and I was like, you know, I'm gonna do this on my own. I'm gonna like, I built myself up a life of nothing. And like everybody deserted me that. Then they see I have all this money coming in, I'm living a great life. And then they start slowly want to come dwindle in, you know? And, um, but you know what? I feel like my clients in that industry, they were like, they were my family. They were my, mm-hmm. like my best friends. Right. You know, they accept me for who I well, was. Well, you're, you're putting them in the ultimate friend zone. Yeah. No, I'm saying, but like, they were like family to me. They were the people right. that like, taught me a lot. I learned a lot from those men. Mm-hmm. When everybody oh, oh, I met the guys. So, the, the, yeah, the women, there's definitely camaraderie. The, guy, you, the guys you're putting in the permanent friend zone, you know that. It's a business. I know. I know. I know. And, and you were very good at it, apparently. Yeah. For me, I, I have a different outlook on relationships. You know, I've seen so many people go, uh, say they place so much value on a marriage, and yet at night they're in the strip club <laughs> with us, you know? Well, yeah, you got to see that. You got to see people that went <laughs> into like, a church. There's no, value, there's no true value on the oath that's been taken. So to me, mar- like, I don't, I don't see, like, if you're going to take an oath, like, that's something that I would take in, like, I consider that a luxury that takes an investment to work on, right? It's not something mm-hmm. you just... Especially uh, if you went to a church and you promised before God till death do us part, you will not covet anybody's neighbor, mm-hmm. and they're going to the strip club uh, looking at you. Yeah. 
And you know what though? I think like from my experience, the the most lovingest, happiest couples I've seen that have been together for a long time, like 30 plus years and are still madly in love and happy are like relationships where they're going out there and they're exploring their sexual side together. Mm-hmm. Like that makes sense to me. Like you're gonna go, why, why are you gonna be a relationship? Why are you gonna go high to have fun? And Swingers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like my experience, most people are great. And they know yeah. I don't know. See, the thing is, I'm so, I'm so sexually inexperienced that uh, I don't know. I'm always like, uh, well, every time I try to date more than one woman at once, it just never happens. It never works out. It just either, I, <laughs> either I try to juggle and then, it, and then I drop them all, or I choose one or the, over the other. That's just the way I'm wired. But uh, I haven't been in a relationship that's lasted that long that it's like, okay, let's start swinging. So. It's so funny you say that. I've been in relationships like that where there was two girls, two of me, I mean, me and a girl and a guy. And it's just like, I wish it could work out, but something always happens, you know? Right. Dating two women separately. I can't oh. even do that. Let's, let's date them both together. But, uh, you know, if you think I got that kind of game, then, yeah, sure. But well, still. I'm still trying to figure out how to make it work out like that, you know? <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even do that. Like, okay, I'm dating two, two people at once, but... Uh, and this is what your early twenties. You really, uh, you really got to explore your sexuality, or you didn't. It was just a job for you. Oh, um, I feel like okay. Well, I got married at a young age. I got married. Uh, I had my first daughter at like eighteen, and I got mm. married around that same time. So, like, I went like boom, 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 doing all these major life decisions, you know. And right. at that, I never got to like figure out who I was. I never got right. to like go out and travel the world and explore. Like I was just like boom, 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 like got married, did this stuff. Um, so I went through some crazy things. I married and left that relationship. And like I got into, like I was looking for a job left and right, you know, to take care of me and my child. And I went to strip club, got hired, they like come back the next day and you start. I remember I sat in the car for six hours the next day, like thinking like I don't know if I should do this, you know. But once I got in there, I started making more money in one night that I made like in two weeks working two jobs, you know? Mm-hmm. Then like, I kind of started realizing like, I don't ever have to like go without, like I don't ever have to like depend on a relationship to like mm-hmm. have a sense of purpose. Actually, you're the second guest in a row. We just uh, taped a show with uh, adult film star, Sophia Rose, similar story. She was, she had a child at 15, she got married and uh, then uh, it didn't work out. And then she discovered that, uh, uh, apparently there are men with bigger dicks out there than her husband. And then she just, uh, she got into the adult industry and uh, she's very successful. So, and it, you don't have to necessarily be in the adult industry, but, uh, you, you should never have to rely on a man or a woman for happiness. You have to, you have to be self-sufficient and you can be self-sufficient anybody. And I feel like that comes a lot back to Satanism, is, and you know, that self-empowerment, like, I feel like there's no greater gift that you can give yourself than to figure out what makes you happy in life that doesn't come from an outside source, you know, being able to tap into that creativity and like love yourself with that creativity within you and like really see that blossom. Like that's mm-hmm. something nothing can take away from you, you know? Right. Like finding, finding your spark in life. That yeah. inner Luciferian spark. And what is your Luciferian spark? This. Oh, okay. All right. I'm going to entertainer. You're an entertainer now. <laughs> now. Uh, so, so how, so this this leads to the uh, the the misconceptions about Satanism because we I've talked about this a few times on our on our podcast mm-hmm. both with Stan and also uh uh Nifer, the uh, satanic rapper and other guests that we've had in that um what what do you think are the misconceptions when you tell people you're, you're a satanist I'm sure a lot of people just recoil Oh my God. Mark my life like I'm not, not to something. mention a satanic high priestess I have gone through so much because of like my and it's not it's not like a belief system it's just tapping into your inner power and using that energy to create the life that you want to be the person you want to be regardless of like outside of like a fear religious fear fear based religious like you know telling you that you can't be this way you have to be this way if you're going to try to step outside that box you're going to be punished like that's Mm -hmm. total bullshit you know Right. That was the case that a lot of these people that have accomplished great things in life, they would be punished right for what they accomplished, you know? So when you tell yeah. people you're a Satanist, so, they're like, ooh. Yeah, ooh. I, yeah. The misconception on that, you know, and I think it really comes from the media and movies and like the whole 
satanic panic stuff, you know, and the freak out stuff. It's all for show. Like, you know, the church would like to take all that stuff and blow it away because then it's, that's a whole, you can have a week's worth of entertainment or a month's worth of entertainment on that, on that stuff, you know? Right. So I think like the misconception is people cut, like when they meet me, they're like, oh, that's, she's a cult leader. She's a satanic witch. Is that mm-hmm. like, they get freaked out, you know? But I'm like, I'm just, I'm just me. Like, I'm yeah. a happy, cheery person. I'm going to do me, like, regardless of what thinks, but like, but you are a cult leader. But you are a cult leader and a satanic witch. I am, but that's besides the point. No. <laughs> In real life, I'm just me, you know. And yes. um, and the funny thing is, it's like we're not going around trying to murder people. We're not going around killing cats and like murdering babies and all this stuff, you know. And it's mm-hmm. so funny that like to me, I'm like, if you can't see past that and laugh about it, like then if it's good. Then you should be scared away by it. Okay. Same, you know right well this is why this is why i uh organized religion doesn't work for me and that's why i'm a buddhist is because uh the whole thing with any religion is that uh there's one way and if you don't do it you're you're going to be punished you're going to go to hell or whatever else and mm-hmm. uh, to me uh that that I, I don't i don't subscribe to that if there if, if yeah. there is a heaven if there is an afterlife which i don't know there is mm-hmm. i you know there are good people in every religion that are going to be you know they're good i mean even if we're discounting heaven and hell there are good people in every religion and that's uh in every philosophy yeah so uh, you can't say okay we're the only good people that's that doesn't work for me yeah and then they were all human beings just trying to like live a hopefully good life you know right and have some joy and laugh along the way Right. Well, and uh, it seems like Satanists seem, seem to have more joy and laughter than anybody else. Now, you have to laugh, right? You have to. Like, life can be oddly and dark and all these things, but, like, you got to laugh, you know? Even if it's yeah. a to joke, that's you know, so how we get through it. Well, you had you had a, a recent video on uh, on mirth and, and laughing and the power of laughter. Yeah. And, yeah, it's about time somebody... Uh, because that's the other thing about Satanism is that uh, sometimes it can be a little too serious. Oh, yeah. In my opinion, I think people get a little that, intimidated. You know? I mean, it's, it's an act. You can laugh. At, I, I I think it's hilarious, but a lot of people are like Bleh. like when I saw you, I went to the uh, Sharon's yeah. event, which I thought was great. But they uh-huh. had a they had a DJ Witch House, W H I C H, and it was funny because somebody asked me, they're like, "Do you like Witch House?" And I thought they were talking about the style of music. Yeah, I yeah. didn't realize that the, the DJ's name was Witch House. I'm like, "Yeah, I like Witch House." He's like, "Yeah, he's doing," and he he had his his face painted vertically black and white stripes which i didn't uh-huh. get until he started djing and he blended into the background but that he had a microphone right? that's pretty cool yeah and then yeah. he had like a, he had like a microphone that was all distorted and he was just like in the middle of playing music <laughs> I, I, I thought it was you know what you know who it reminded me of you know on the night before christmas the boogeyman mm-hmm. he reminded me of that guy yeah he was yeah he was really yeah. trying for that and uh yeah so and you know and and the rituals and all that i just think uh i don't know people say people you know some people tend to tend to take it real seriously and i know um you know once again i um you know a couple times i had uh stanton levay on the show i think he really enjoyed it because i was first off i was not a sycophant and i was not uh just like bowing down like oh my god yeah. and uh, and also i had a sense of humor about it which i don't think anybody does because i've heard him on other shows and they're just like uh Please tell me what to do, and just really serious. And were people what, intimidated by him? People who are were intimidated by him, and I wasn't. I, I was not. He was a nice that guy, is, and yeah, he passed away in December. Funny. People don't know, but a yeah. lot. Well, I mean, because he was, you know, his grandfather, you know, wrote the book and was the the founder of the Church of Satan. So he's got that bloodline in him. And people, people well, you've seen it. You saw how people treat Sharon, his his wife, his uh, his widow. Yeah, you see people go up to her and just like uh, just cower. I yeah. mean, you're a high priestess; people cower to you, don't they? Yeah, no. Yeah, I've gone through a lot of stuff. And it's sad. It's sad. It's so sad. It breaks my heart that people have that mentality, you know. And I, but at the same time, this is how I see it. Um, especially with all these things going on with the stuff in the church and all this like stuff with like the sexual abuse and stuff like that. I think like. Mm-hmm. Especially like people have this mindset that like a title or uh, being tied to a certain religious or belief system 
makes you a good or bad person. At the mm-hmm. end of the day, like everybody's human being and they all sure. are, are capable of bad and good things. Mm-hmm. So regardless if somebody has a title of being a priest in, in a religious organization, doesn't mean that that person is not capable of bad things, right? Sure. Just like me and Sharon, like just because we're, t- we're satanic witches and we're satanic high priests doesn't mean like that we're all bad or that we're all good people. At the end of the day, we're just human beings dealing with right. life just like anybody else. And how did you become a high priestess? How does how does one do that? Because it's funny because uh, your your father was uh, he was uh, high up in the church, and now you are. You're following well, a, it's a family better, tradition, but in a weird uh, uh, way. Well, what better way to revolt against religion, right? Right. So, how do you become a high priestess? How did you who deign who did, who deigned you a high priestess? I would. And say what does that I, entail? I was oh god, a lot of work, <laughs> a lot of work. You know what they say on the pyramid, right? Mm-hmm. It takes all this work to like create the little show that people get to see, you know? Okay. So and Satanism is sure. a pyramid scheme is what you're saying. No, I'm, I'm sure you can relate to this as an artist, yeah. right? Right, Mark? It's yeah. like, you know, people see your show, right? Mm-hmm. They see the little top point of your show. Yes. They don't see all the bottom hard work that you put into creating that, that show. Oh, that's for sure. Make it happen. And I think it's the same thing with the high priestess, you know, like, there's a lot of work that goes into doing all that it, it keeps me mm-hmm. busy, you know keeps no, busy. and then people i uh, uh, two three times a week uh, people uh either come up to me how do i become a stand-up comedian or how do i become a podcaster it's like it's a, a lot, lot of, of work. fucking hard work it's a lot of <laughs> fucking hard work but people don't want to see that and that's the thing let me ask you this uh listen because everybody is a narcissist now and everybody wants the spotlight on them and that social media has a lot to do with it but nobody wants to put in the work Am I am I wrong? I mean, what what, what do we do about this narcissistic society? Because not everybody deserves to have the spotlight on them like you. Not everybody's put the hard work in like you. But yeah, I think I think it comes into like the strong will survive. The people that put the work in, like the proofs in the pudding. You're not going to accomplish something great without putting mm-hmm. in a lot of fucking hard work. Right. You know, people like you can go be you can go host a show, Mark, but unless you have that energy behind it. It's mm-hmm. not going to do shit. Right. Unless you have to connect with people, it's not going to do anything. Right. You know? So, so, let's, so, let's, so, so, what's the first step to becoming a high priestess? So, what was the first uh, amount of hard work you had to put in? Um, I would say a lot of it has to go to my sobriety. Right. My sobriety. Um, Which, I congratulations started, on that. Oh, thank you. You might see this now when I was wrecked. <laughs> Um, right. I would say, okay, so it goes back with my sobriety, and uh, it's one of those things I feel like it, it's, it came to me as much as like it's something that I helped manifest as well. Uh, where would I start? I officially came in with organization in 2020, and it's still something, it's a secret thing. It's not really open to the public as of yet. Okay. And I don't know if that's really something I want to want to go. Anyways. So this, um, but this, during the pandemic is when you uh, started pursuing this. Yeah. Yeah. I was up north growing a lot of weed and uh, got really connected with nature. I was growing a lot of weed. <laughs> um, and, then you went, and then you got sober or? Well, I think my my... Addiction, you know, I think it starts at a young age. It starts, mm-hmm. it's there, it's there, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, I, I struggled, though, with, like, a lot of self-inflicted harm, and then it grew to eating disorders, and then, like, once uh, uh, I started, started trying to, trying to, like, start and self-medicate with over-the-counter medications and that, that just evolved for me. Like, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. My last run, I was on fentanyl, oh. you know, on my arm. You know, Ooh. I'll have two years clean. Good for you. So, um, but I know like, and I think it comes like with, like with the industry I was in too, you know, there's a lot of party, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, but so I would say like, I really started, like the idea really came to me about putting the order of a black thing sun together, one sun together when I was up North and, um, really wanted to do something that, embraces Satanism and empowers individuals. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I've really been able to tap into like getting a lot of momentum with my sobriety, doing the shadow work, mm-hmm. 
really figuring out who I am. And right. like, you know, um, now I'm, a, I'm going, I'm doing things in my life to help cultivate that and create it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And who are you? Who am I? Yeah, since you figured it out. I'm an entertainer. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure. Now, now, what is the Black Flame Sun? Because you, you, you're, you're the, the Black you're the high, Flame you're, you're the high priestess. So if we, if we, so you've got an order. So what is the Black Flame Sun? The Black Flame Sun is that flame inside of Saul, that mm-hmm. creative spark, that spark of consciousness. Okay. That you have, I feel like as part of that shadow work, you know, we go inside and we have to face, and even like I think it ties in so strong with with the writing and the 12 step programs, all that stuff. It's like, mm-hmm. and I, I feel like the 12 step programs are very satanic in their own right. Really? Right? Yes. Don't they and have the serenity know, prayer and all that? And how so it is, I would, I would compare it as like, you know, um, man, we create our own gods, right? We create our own belief system. We mm-hmm. create these things. Right. Too. We tap into some type of higher consciousness and we're able to like, manifest these things Mm -hmm. and uh and that's part of like the put that program it's coming to understanding of your own higher power Mm -hmm. so you're creating your own conscious connection to something within you and being able to go with part of that heart phase recovery is going into diving down into yourself and dealing with those traumas and those underlying wounds Mm -hmm. to be able to become the highest possible version of yourself right and that's what I would describe as the, the black flame. That black flame within us all. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's, that's that's an order. I, that's an order I'd like to get in. And I uh I, I and I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm not sure I'm the only uh I mean to for you to have you as a high priestess, I'm sure is uh is quite um quite special. I'm sure plenty of men have uh have been lured in. Well we got people, we got members all around the world right now, but as far as public access, it's not really something that's open to the public. Right. But I mean, you did, you recently had a poster giveaway. So I'm sure that was quite, uh, oh, yeah. Quite a, quite a clamor for that. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. We had our winner. Yeah. But, yes. um, and, and speaking of men, uh, and I'm just going to sidetrack here, but, uh, you must love a great smelling man. A great smelling man? There's nothing sexier than a great smelling man, is there? Of course. Yeah. So, guys, if you want to smell great, get tactical soap. It's pheromone infused soap. They have three three kinds: Maverick, Bond, and Dirted. And they have three different types of that. They have deodorant. They have lotions. Go get tactical soap. Go to the description in the podcast catcher and be a great smelling man and be the sexiest man you can be. So. Order of the Black Flame stuff. So we should all get into the Black Flame because I was, uh, I was watching some of your videos on magic, uh-huh. and uh, and you were saying how you could become the, the best person you could be, and you could basically take everything, all your hopes and dreams on the inside, and manifest them. Of course. And tell me how to do that. A lot of hard work. <laughs> I guess so. And I think that's the humor and all, you know, and people, I think the majority of people, like you're saying, these narcissists, they want this quick, easy, like, let's have it right now. We're going to, mm-hmm. we're going to, we're going to get what we want right now, but it takes a lot of hard work, you know? And I think that's the thing when it comes to magic and the cult is it takes a lot of work, a lot of, um, uh, even ritual takes a lot of work and messing mm-hmm. up a lot of work and transforming your energy, you know, like in order to have something come into your life you have to open those pathways for the correct energy to happen to manifest those things in your life you know so if you want to acquire fame you got to start working on yourself and developing your skills to to like get at that level where that can come into your life you know it's Mm -hmm. the the attraction right yeah so what's what's the difference between that and the law of the law of attraction it very works very much the same Mm -hmm. so this is magic with a c and a k c and a k yes right so what's the difference between magic with a C, magic with a K, and magic with a C and a K? Magic with a C is more of a mainstream thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, magic with a K is uh, goes back into like the order uh, to Crowley's order, mm-hmm. Alistair Crowley, right? The OTO mm-hmm. or Templars, yeah. Yes, the the OG Satanists. We know Alistair Crowley, oh. Mr. Crowley, yes. Mr. Crowley. And, 
but what, how does what when you combine the C with the K, what does that do? It's just the way he spelled it. He chose to spell it to differentiate. Okay. Yeah. And if it's just with a K, what is that? I you can tell say, I'm not very magical. It's kind of like putting the doctor on there, you know? Like, it's just a name. Right. Put the doctor on it. And now it's something like, now it's something different. Now it adds a different hook to it. Authority oh, okay. To it. All right. I'll, I'll, t- I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I, t- I don't, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying you know, to prove you know, myself. Go ahead. You know, you're not the word burst in the occult or magic system or anything like no, that? No, I wish I was. And uh, I mean, I, I have friends that are, but I'm yeah. not. Like I say, I, I'm not I'm not a Satanist and I don't, uh, I don't really, I don't, uh, uh, Nicole oh. does and, and Hannah does and my friends do, but I don't, uh, I don't deal in magic. I don't deal in, uh, um, I, I'm not adverse to it, but I just don't, yeah. uh, I just, uh, should I? Well, I would say, okay, so I guess that's another uh, uh, something that people could, like, not understand fully when it comes to being a Satan. It's like, just because somebody's a Satanist does not mean they practice in the cult with magic. Mm-hmm. You know? Right, right. It's like religion. There's all these different types of religion. There's all these different types of magic orders as well, you know? Like, you mm-hmm. got the Golden Dawn, and that's using different god names and things like that, and they actually do reference it the Bible and stuff like that. Right. And then, uh, you have the OTO that is more um, around the Golden Dawn that uh, Aleister Crowley went off and created, the OTO. Mm-hmm. So there's mm-hmm. different orders, and they don't all tie in Satan. They don't tie in Satan. But right. they do tie in with more of a Luciferian name. Okay. And what, mm-hmm. and, and, and here's the thing, because I, I asked, I've asked a couple of people this, but, uh, you know, uh, Sat- Satanism, from what I understand, from what most people define it as, mm-hmm. my Satanist friends, is that it's really uh, just, uh, you know, it's just being, you know, responsible for yourself and mm-hmm. your own happiness. But yeah. if that's the case, why bring Satan and Lucifer and all of those images into it? I feel it's part of a statement, like a protest, like, hey, religion has tried to, like, demean human potential for so long and destroy, like, uh, especially Christianity, you know, mm-hmm. um, and the Catholic Church and cover up and, and suppress the voice of the people. And I think that's really kind of like the the showmanship of it is like we could we could choose any any we could be like it's it's the energy field of light you know mm-hmm. or the quantum field there's there's many terms for one thing you know you go into a store and you look at cameras there's many brands you can pick which brand you want right so with that. but I felt like it's more of a statement it's more of a showmanship like hey we're tired of of having our voices suppressed we're tired 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 of being having being told that that we don't have control of bodies so we have to be this and that you know, it's like a showmanship, like a, like a, like a statement. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, you definitely make statements. I mean, you, uh, and, and, and speaking of shows and statements now, I've heard a lot of your old podcasts and a lot of your old, uh, YouTube videos mm-hmm. and you put on like a, a, an effective, like British accent. What was that? I was just playing it out. I was trying to step out. It was like, it's weird because some, <laughs> some things I'm like, you know, I, you talk like this and then it's like, Hello, this is Lucy. <laughs> like you're in Downton Abbey or something. I don't know what's going on. I just wanted to play with it, try it out, and see see how it felt, you know. And you didn't stick with it. No, I didn't stick. Oh, okay, I was just wondering if that was a Solomonship thing. I so what, what... it was just me. Oh, okay. So what was the last thing you manifested? Uh, I'm very intrigued by this. Hmm. Besides the show, obviously, uh, you got to be on the Dark Mark show. But other than that, uh, what was the last uh, thing you manifested? I would say the fact that I'm here, alive, mm-hmm. doing this mm-hmm. podcast with you is something manifested. There you go. There you go. There you go. The proof's in the pudding. There proof's you go. The proof's in the pudding. And oddly enough, now, and I've, I've been listening to a lot of your stuff, and you say that there's like the, the left side energy and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. I'm left-handed. Yeah. I'm left-handed. What does that mean? You're left-handed. That means you use the right side of your brain more. Okay, so every time you say left, I should think right. Yeah. Or does that mean I'm Opposite. aligned, properly aligned, and and the ninety yeah. percent of the world that's right-handed are not properly You're different. aligned? Well, I definitely You're am. Different. Well, I definitely yeah. am. You're special. Well, obviously some would, you manifested this, you know. Some some would say this. Well, no, I well, I manifested <laughs> this, but I also uh, messaged you about twenty times to try to get a date together, and we finally got it together today. But that's a whole other story. 
I wanted to make sure everything was proper and prepared for you. I'll bet you did. That's special too, Mark. Oh, geez. Thank you so much. So as a high priestess, I mean, uh, you know, it's a, it's quite a responsibility. Now you're, how many other priests and priestess are, are in your order? It's just me. Oh, okay. Priestess right now. Okay. I haven't opened the door. I should bring in anybody else in yet. I'm mm-hmm. still growing and um, doing, you know, life is going on. Oh, life. sure. So um, I mean, like, I wish I would love to have invest all my time fully in just doing the order and really creating things to open to the public. But at this time, you know, I got to, I also got to keep me together, mm-hmm. you know? So it's one of those things that's coming together. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I, 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 no, that's good. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's spreading. I mean, you, if you start, I can only imagine starting a, a starting a, an order or religion. That's it. There's a lot to it. And you're going yeah. to school. So you got like, yeah, you know. And I'm going to school. I have so many meetings. I go to so many things I'm doing right now. I have, um, you know, along with that, with that, with the, the addict lifestyle came legal repercussions. And right now I'm dealing with legal repercussions. So, Mm. I, that's something that um, it's kind of keeping me. Um, I still got a ball and chain going on right now. <laughs> so, oh, so geez. Yeah. So once we move forward with that, then I think this really going to get some more momentum with stuff. But right now, um, it's more of inner working stuff. Right. So, you know, it's a lot of people, they have, you know, they, they work, they go to school, they got busy lives. You got work, you go to school. You're, and you know what? you're organizing your satanic uh, order. You know, you got things going on. And I think that's that's part of like being like you can, uh, anybody can accomplish anything they want to in life. It's just making mm-hmm. making the sacrifice, the routine, and the schedule necessary to create that, you know? Yeah, you can you can become you could you could become a high priestess if you really want to. Now you can go from drug addict to dollar retainer to doing this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't don't define yourself as a drug addict. You're not. You overcame that. I mean, that's just a that's a part of your past. But it's that it doesn't define you. No, it's it shouldn't that, define you. It's it's my angel and my demon. Yeah. Well, we all it's have that. My life. We all have that. You know. Right. But yeah. how ironic. But that's part of magic is learning to play with those both. You know. And- oh, is that what you do? That's what I've been doing wrong. How do you balance the angel and the devil? Because it seems like, uh, especially it's you know, you're like, work. <laughs> yeah. And if 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 drug abuse is your devil and you're embracing the devil, isn't that uh, a contrary message? No. Okay. I feel like I know what my I know what my dark is. Mm-hmm. You know, and the fact that I can acknowledge my dark means that I know I can do things every day to keep that devil check okay right? all right so i can be that higher self of myself and like be able to accomplish what i accomplish in life okay yeah. so i think so, that's when ignorance comes in play that's when it's just a mess yeah you know. well you know that's what i'm trying to find out because i i don't know anything about this i i mean i know something some i know more than a lot of people but i don't know you know i don't i, I hear all the rumors i hear like there's satanic uh messages in the barbie movie and uh do you have any confirmation on that in the barbie movie i haven't watched it i'm not a lot, like really a movie watcher right but people are saying oh there's some uh there's some satanic content in the barbie movie and and barbie. you know little nas x he's he's playing around with devil imagery and all sorts of things and you know there's a rumor that the uh satanist killed juice world the rapper and uh, all sorts of things people have a good story yeah you know and i think at the end of the day too it adds a layer of fantasy to the mundane life right you know what do you fantasize <laughs> about what do i fantasize about yeah World domination. <laughs> i can see that you're well on your way i mean what's i mean how how far is your reach when you say worldwide what is the furthest person from you that is in your order you don't have to say who it is but who what country? All around the world. Asia, Africa, Europe? All of them. Yeah? Oh, wow. That's the magic of the internet, right? 
Yeah, well, that's the thing. Now, is the internet satanic? That's uh, I think a lot of people would probably say yes. And probably say no, because is that a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. I would like to say media is, is God. Is it? If it's posted on Facebook, then it has to be true. Well, yeah, I've seen I've seen your posts, so they're all true. But so what is the future of the order of the order for you? I mean, uh, you say you're going to be dominating the world, but between now and then, what's what's going to be happening? Um, right now, I'm, I'm enjoying entertaining. Yeah. Right now, I'm enjoying entertaining, bringing a little laughter and fun to the mundane life. Yeah, I mean, and I was. We will see what transpires out of that, but. Well, you say that, but I've been listening to I've been listening to your podcast <laughs> and. Uh, and they, and they tended to get like really deep, really fast. Like I was, there was one, uh, you were with somebody and they were, you first it was like, oh, we're going to talk about sex. I'm like, oh, I'm all for that. And then it got really deep and got into child trafficking and all this other stuff. I'm like, ah, oh, that's, uh, I, I'm not into that. Yeah. It's a fascinating conversation, but it got a little deeper than I was expecting. And I think that's the duality of the beast. That's the duality of sex. The duality of the beast. Mm hmm but doesn't uh, say Satanism uh, embrace all that? Satanism embraces a healthy, balanced sexuality, not the right. not harming uh, and trafficking human beings and exploitation. Right. You know, that's yeah. not something we condone, can, can condone, and I think that's another common misconception. Right. Well, that, that's, that's a total misconception because people, I hear people all the time, they're like, uh, you know, that's uh, this this person's a pedophile, that person's a pedophile, and whether they are or not, they're like, oh, Satan's doing this. And it's like, and there's this whole moral divide of like, uh, uh, and Trump and other Republicans are exploiting it where, okay, uh, you know, everybody with a, you know, with a heart is is not, you know, is against child trafficking. That just goes without saying. But then, you know, people are make, making, the, making it a, a moral ground and it's, it should be understood. And um, it's hard to touch one. It's 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 so it's it's a it's a very hard process to touch on one thing and not come to touch the other thing. Right. They're so deeply interwoven. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a direction that I really am wanting to take with Order of the Black Flame is really addressing those underlying themes mm -hmm. so that people can feel more comfortable coming out and talk about these things so that they can go and get the help that they need. To evolve mm -hmm. and not have to live in that sheltered, uh, trauma-based mindset, you know. And uh, a lot of times, I felt like a lot of these things are something like if people are looking at the outside, like outside sexual abuse and stuff. Like it's coming from outside sources. So a lot of times, it's taking place inside people's families' homes, yeah. you know. And it's so and it's so sad that like. Oh, like, okay, I can talk, sit here and talk about all the good that came out of you being in the adult entertainment industry, but there's also another layer. There's the dark side, mm -hmm. you know? And um, there's a certain type of mindset, I think, that has to be taken in for a woman to be able to do that as well, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of in my background, there was a lot of stuff that was going on in my home, you know? So it's like, yeah. like, I, like I say, the card we are dealt. Like doing my inner inner healing work and shadow work, and now I'm seeing like, oh, like maybe it wasn't so. Maybe um, at the same time that I thought I was in control, that there was also underlying deeper things that were to set the fabric mm -hmm. of life. And uh, the fact that a lot of these things are so hush hush and like not talked about, and I think it comes more from like the coming of a place of like, what do we do with these things when they come out in the family? You know. Mm -hmm. Do we send the person to jail? Like, do we keep it covered? Do we keep the family together? And the sad thing is that it's like women and people that end up in the industry, I think it's like the baby being thrown out with bathwater. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to address this, but let's just disown this one and let them go to the streets and let's just count, count them as like a messed up person. When yet there's, there, there's still a human being in that, in that, in that process, you know, right. that needs, that needs, the acknowledgement of what's going on and what's happened so that way they can go forward and have, get the healing that they need. And, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of mental illness, a lot of the things uh, spam from stuff like that. And I think right. that's one of the things that touches my heart. It's um, my mom is raised in an orphanage and she went the, to the children and human traffic out there. And uh, that greatly affected how my mom mm. and uh, 
she was married, she was brought to the States by some weird man, you know, married off to a weird man. And uh, um, I would like to say my dad's my dad, but he's just a weird guy that my mom married. And, you know, I think the stereotypes, I really don't like talk about too much, it's, it's hard, but like the stereotypes, you know, of like stuff that takes place women will do certain things like that like it's not so far from the truth you know there's always truth to, to those rumors well unfortunately the unfortunate thing is that uh not just in the adult industry but every woman i've ever met in my life and that includes my family members mm. there has been some some degree of or some instance of sexual abuse at some point mm. every mm. single 100 percent. so is ai gonna gonna finally uh crush us all Crush human beings. What, what's the satanic perspective on that? Um, just like with everything, I think there's the good in the dark, mm. and I feel that even with uh, internet and the, the world closing in, become a much smaller place. I feel that there's always going to be people that misuse that for dark purposes, and there's going to be people, people that use that for good purposes. Correct? Mm. You would think so. Yes. A tool. A, a, it seems, a seems tool. like everybody's using it using it now to get out of work. They're something using it to fill out their people. resumes and yeah, yeah, doing their work for them. Something could be a tool in one, one person's hand and another person's hand could be a weapon. It depends on the human being, right? Um, at the same time, though, I feel that the, the smaller, that the way the internet is making the world a smaller place, it takes out a third party business and it puts the power back in the hands of people. You know, along with that, I know people, I've heard a lot of people saying that, you know, AI is taking over the job of the people. But no, it's actually, I feel like if we look at the positive, the silver lining to that, it's actually making people, giving people more time to spend with their family or spend on doing something creative or or to put more more uh, power in their hands to create their own schedule. You know, people go do Uber and all stuff. They can create their own schedule. They get to invest that time in doing other things that they probably would have more, that they would like to do more with their time besides working a nine to five job. Sure. There's many, there's many, there's a lot of benefits mm -hmm. to AI as well. But on the other hand, you've got uh, crazy human beings like uh, keep putting in, how would you kill people and dominate the world? And uh, it just keeps uh, rolling over and over and over again, coming up with ideas. Heavy is the crown, but you know, the crown for the king, the word is the crown is subject to the people, right? Oh, right. Okay. And you just radiate sexuality. You radiate sensuality. Uh, just, just walk into a room. It's not just that you're that beautiful. You <laughs> yeah. just, you just have that. Like, have wow. That. Yeah. Um, and I think that's like a blessing and a curse. At the same yeah. Time. <laughs> I don't have it. How, how do I get that? Is that is that the? Do I have to join the order to get that? Is that what happens? That's what you ask for. Yeah. Well, maybe I do have it. I don't know. You were very flirty with me that night, but I, I don't think I have that. Like, I definitely don't have it as much as you do. That's for sure. I saw you walking around that night and just, uh, just everybody's like, wow. <laughs> and it's not just the dress you were wearing. It's not just the aesthetics. It was just, there's something that just, uh, that just, you just, you just exude it. Yeah. I and I that. take it you are, either you always had it or when you were in the adult in industry, you, you developed it. I think every woman has it. It's just hidden. Not to the degree that you do. Maybe it's magic. <laughs> is that what it is? See that, that we're back to magic again. I gotta get some magic in my life. I, I I love talking to you. I can't wait to talk to you again. I might be in your your neck of the woods soon, and we'll frolic in nature and do all of that. But uh, yes. Before I let you go, tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. And before I go. The thing I thought was the best thing about the research for you, you have what? a LinkedIn page. The, you do. can't get more evil than that. I'm, I'm, on, I'm everywhere, okay, Mark? I'm everywhere. So tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. Oh, no, I'm watching you too. Tell everybody how they can get a hold of you. Um, you can get a hold of me on Facebook, TikTok. I think, I believe, I'll have to send you my links and then you can post it. I will. On video. Please. Uh, so, yeah, but I know I'm on... YouTube, LinkedIn, um, uh, sorry, Instagram, Facebook, those are, and Twitter. We're on Twitter as well. Yes, and I got and, some podcasts going on and, out and, there. And LinkedIn. And LinkedIn. And LinkedIn. Yeah. For Bishop, uh, you have been a delight. Yeah. I could talk to you all day. And uh, I thank you so much for being on the show. Finally, we got ah. you on. Mwah. And hey, I'm goth comedian. 
And I'm Goth Comedian on all social media. Everybody have a wonderfully creepy week. Bye. Bye.